you, Father, for who you are, our Savior, Jesus, who went to the cross. Father, and you shed your blood, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. And God, we thank you tonight, our Savior, Lord. We're redeemed by you. He said, 
in your home, I want you just to take this moment and I know you're watching and I want you just to lift up your hands it's right here in this moment I feel God here and I know that God is not limited to a wall limited to a camera 
But right in your home, I want you to begin to speak in that heavenly language. I want you to begin to worship him right now. Some of you have been going through different emotions the past few days. But I want to let you know that the rock of your salvation showed up in your house tonight. And he's reminding you that he is your peace. He is reminding you that he is the one who gave you a promise. He is reminding you that he is the healer of your life. So would you lift up your hands and worship him tonight. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Right there where you're at, grab the people that are with you, just begin to worship. If you have your children right there, begin to teach them how to worship. Show them how to lift up their hands. Show them how to lift up their hands. And even right now, right there in your home, God will even baptize them in the Holy Spirit tonight. Father, we bless your name. Some of you are being filled right now with strength. Some of you are being filled right now with hope. Some of you are being filled and you're remembering the promises. Hey, for there's a time to scatter stones and there's a time to gather them. Oh, we thank you, Father, that tonight we're gathering the stones, the rocks, the promises. We're gathering. button right there. Press all the hearts you can to let us know that you're with us tonight. And listen, we want to welcome you tonight to Victor Arch Church of San Diego on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Alan and Sister Georgina. And I love what our pastor says. When this whole thing is done, come on somebody. We're going to have one big party together as Victor Outreach Church of San Diego family. So can you do me a favor? Can you just give a virtual hug right there where you're at? Because how many know we're family. And we're children and sons and daughters of our God, our Heavenly Father. So it's so good to be with you tonight. And again, I want to just welcome you on behalf of our pastors. Now listen, right after this service, we want you to tune in, follow Pastor Al. If you haven't followed him yet, 
on his Instagram and his Facebook right after tonight's service, after we conclude tonight. He is going to go live, him and Sister Georgina, and they have some words of encouragement that they want to share with you tonight. And, and really, at the end of the day, we miss you, we love you, and we just want to give you words of encouragement because how many know Big Yard Church of San Diego? We are family. Come on. Can you give some hearts all over the social media and listen, we gotta, we're infiltrating, we are flooding all of the social channels, all the social networks. Again, I want to give a shout out to all those that are watching tonight and all those that are logged into our YouTube page, our Facebook page. You can also log into our Instagram page and follow us there at Vicarage Church of San Diego. And also Sunday, would you do me a favor? Yes, you're pressing hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep pressing hearts because would you do me a favor? Let's continue to keep our pastor in prayer. And this Sunday, he, is, he has a powerful word that I believe that is going to charge, direct, encourage, and, and just give us some strength in this time that we're in throughout our nation and throughout even right now as a church. So you don't want to miss out on that. Give me some hearts if you're praying for your pastor. If you love your pastors, come on somebody, put it right here. And I see the hearts just going off. It's, 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 it's happening tonight. So we want to thank you again for tuning into our broadcast. I thank God for this opportunity to be able to come before you this evening and share the word of the Lord that God has put upon my heart. In the next few minutes, I'm asking that all of you right now, right there you're at in your living room, to go ahead and take your Bibles, get your notepads, and do me a favor. Do me one more, do one more thing, because what I, what I miss the most, really, here is when we, able, when we get together and we're able to greet one another and see one another and love one another and hug one another, right? Uh, everybody's doing the elbow dap now these days. Come on, somebody. But how many of us know we're a loving church? So would you do me a favor? Will you, will you tag somebody in the comment box and tell them that you love them? Tell them you give them a word of encouragement. Tag your pastor. Tag, tag one of the leaders, tag your, your brother or sister in Christ, just do it, just blow it up, tag somebody on the Facebook and YouTube, it's real simple, all you have to do is type in their name, tag them, tell them you're thinking about them, tell them you miss them, tell them you love them, because you know, we're a church that really believes in just connecting and loving, and that's one thing that you'll find out when you come to Victor Arts Church of San Diego, when this is all said and done, when we come back together in assembly, you're going to know that we truly are family and missing one another. So will you do that tonight? Yes, let's do it. Go for it. All right. Well, thank you again for tuning in. I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity and this privilege to share with you the word of God tonight. I thank God for my salvation. I thank God for our pastors, Pastor Al Sister Georgina. I thank God for my beautiful wife, Jennifer, Sister Jen. Come on, somebody. And God has blessed me tremendously with a beautiful wife. And I thank all of you, our Victor Arch Church of San Diego family. That has really, you know, at the end of the day, you, in times like this, when Pastor Mark was up here and he was worshiping and prophesying and, and worshiping the Lord, I mean, you just feel the connection, the love, and even more so, like never before, this is the season where we need to stick together and be as one in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a big hand and give me some hearts as you're there watching tonight. Praise the Lord. John chapter 14, and we're going to read a very familiar portion of scripture. And as we were singing this song, the Lord gave me confirmation to the word that was placed upon my spirit for today. In John chapter 14, the Bible says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Now, this is Jesus speaking. My, heart, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. And take you to be with me as you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place and where I'm going. Father, we thank you tonight. And Father, for the next few moments, for the next few minutes, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would use me, that you would speak to the hearts that are listening. Let it take lodging. Father, we ask today that, Father, you would encourage us and strengthen us, God, in this season, in this hour, in this time. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you agree, hit the hearts, because this is the way I can tell. I'm watching it right here on my broadcast. As you hit the hearts, it's just, hey, it's just the amen preacher. Come on, somebody. So hit the hearts tonight. And I see you guys are posting everybody's name. You're tagging everybody, which is awesome. And let's continue to share the love with one another. And, and, and you know, in this time of what we call, what, what the world calls quarantine and what we would call as separation, how many just know that uh, this is probably... The most cleaning I've ever done in my home. Come on, somebody. This is probably the most cleaning I've ever done in my living room. 
Um, and if you're like me, you know, we're, we're working at home and we're, we're setting up our office at home. And so every day I have to clean and, and, and get, get everything prepared as if someone were coming over. And so these last few weeks have been pretty uh, interesting because uh, even my wife was telling me, she goes, I can't believe you're doing this, right? Because I've been cleaning like every other day. And so one day I had this interesting thought that came over me. And as I was there cleaning in, in the living room, I began to think about the word prepare. And I began to think about how in this season, in this hour, how God is preparing us. Or shall we say we are preparing for God in a time where we know that this is the moment and this is the hour in which any day our Lord Jesus Christ can come back. I, I thought to myself, I want to look at that word prepare. And the word prepare means to make oneself ready. To get ready and to make things all ready. And many of you know, Victor I. San Diego, we have been in an open heaven since October. And one thing that the Lord has spoken to me about in this open heaven, that this is the hour and this is the moment where the Holy Spirit wants to use us in a powerful way as open heaven is declared over our lives. Give me some hearts if you're with me tonight. And tonight, I really believe that as you're there watching, that this word that the Lord showed me was a word for us to prepare. For the time and the season and the hour is now. The word appoint means to align or to assign. In other words, there's an appointment that happens between you and I that God wants to appoint us. He wants to align us and he wants to assign us. You see, the activation now is the assignment at hand. As sons and daughters, we have the assignment to advance the message, the kingdom of heaven, to be able to tell others about Jesus and his great, 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 come on somebody, salvation message. There's a divine alignment that I believe tonight in which where the Lord wants to take us into new territory. He wants to direct us to new land. He wants to direct us to that place in which he's prepared for you and I. One of the things that I fell short in that a few weeks ago I had to come to realize was that I had to repent before the Lord. I had to come before God at this altar. And it was in a service where the power of God and the spirit of the Holy the, the Spirit of God was moving so powerfully. And it's been that it's been that way so so powerfully in our services. And as I was at the altar, I began to weep. I began to cry. And I began to ask God to forgive me. And, and I asked him to forgive me because I was falling short in my intercession for my family. I was falling short in my prayer and intercession for my loved ones and unsaved loved ones. And the Lord began to just put a, 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 a spirit of forgiveness and mercy upon me. As, as I was crying and I was, and I was weeping and I said, God, I'm so sorry that I've wasted time not praying for my loved ones, not praying for those that don't know the gospel. And if there's ever a time to begin to pray and begin to lift up our families, this is the time. The assignment the Lord gave me is the assignment that we have here as a church where we're living, lifting up our families. We're putting our families' names on, 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 on these crosses and on these steps. And we're believing God for salvation. And I felt that God was giving me a, an assignment to do it all again, do it all over again. Uh, hit the reset button. Say, okay, son, let's go ahead and let's start interceding. Let's start praying and let's start lifting up your family. As that was happening in the book of Acts chapter 16, Verse 31, the Bible says, and they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your whole household shall be saved. This was a promise that God gave me many years ago. And as I was there repenting before God and saying, God, I'm so sorry, he began to remind me of his promise that he had over my life. And I want to tell you something, Victory Outreach, God's promises are yes and amen. If he said it, he is going to do it. He is not a God that shall lie. He is a God that will fulfill his word and accomplish it in Jesus' name. So as this open heaven was continuing, the hour in which I believe which we must prepare and how many of us know we're living in a Kairos moment? We're living in an opportune time. The Kairos moment, which means the appointed time in the purpose of God. In other words, the time has come, he said, in Mark chapter 1, verse 15. He said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. You see, activation tonight is the release of the spirit of the Lord for such a time as this. And as we're assigned with power, I really believe that there's assignments 
and alignments that the Lord is calling you and I to in which he's already prepared for you and I. In fact, in the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 23, the Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. You see, it's during these times, in this season, in this hour, that I believe that we must pray. That we must take hold of the very foundation that keeps our communication open, and that is prayer. Prayer that we can come before God on a daily basis. Prayer uh, where we can come before God and have an open heaven, an open communication within our homes. It was there uh, the other night at 2.45 a.m. And I normally sleep because, you know, I snore. Come on, somebody, right? And so I normally sleep away from my wife at times because, you know, sometimes due to heavy snoring or whatever it is, right? And, and, and if you can attest to that, come on, somebody, hit the heart button. Hello, somebody, right? And so that night in particular, I was uh, face, facing this way, you know, towards my wife. And it was about 2.45 a.m. And all of a sudden, I, I felt a nudge on my back as if something was hitting my back. In fact, it was just hitting my back. And, 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 and when I got up, I went, oh. <laughs> my wife goes, what happened? Did you have a bad dream? And, and I said, no, the, the Holy Spirit just woke me up. And it was 2.45 in the morning, and I was like, the Holy Spirit just woke me up. And so here I am. I, I, I know I'm not crazy, right? And I said, okay, Holy Spirit, if it's you, confirm it. Two seconds later, my wife goes, can you grab me some water? I said, absolutely. And I was going down the stairs. I, I was thinking about water, and I said, water is one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody, right? And all of a sudden, I started thinking to myself, I go, wow, okay, I, I need to go bring this water back upstairs. I need to come downstairs, and I need to pray. Because, you know, if you, when you wake up in the middle of the night like that, and the Holy Spirit wakes you up, you, you don't know what to do. But obviously, you got to pray, right? And so as I was coming downstairs, I sat on my couch, and I put on some worship music. And I began to write in my journal. And as I was writing on my journal, the, the sentence... That I, had, that I had written was, the Lord has awakened me. And that's it. And, and, you know, if you're a writer, then you know that you get writer block at times, right? Or, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're writing a, a paragraph, you, you, sometimes you get stuck. And, and I felt like I had writer's block, and that was it. And I, that sentence, the Lord has awakened me, immediately put my pen down, and I began to intercede. I began to pray, and I began to ask the Lord to show me what, what is it that he wanted to speak to me about. And as I was praying for my family, I was praying for the church, I was praying for our pastors, I was praying for our home, I was, you know, I was just praying and praying and praying. And all of a sudden, this word dropped in my spirit. And the word was wake. W-A-K-E. Wake. And it was that word that I said, okay, it stuck with me, and it, and, it, and it just stuck with me, and the Holy Spirit woke me up. And so, why did this word drop in my spirit? Well, when I looked it up in the dictionary a few moments uh, after I had realized that this word was dropped in my spirit, the word is defined as emerge or cause to emerge from a state of sleep. And so as I was thinking about this word, I began to think about how the Holy Spirit is nudging us to wake up. That this is the season and this is the hour, and, and he's doing it in a graceful way. He's not doing it in a fearful way. Come on, somebody. He's doing it in a way where, church, we have a responsibility to begin to wake up and take ownership of what's happening today. He's calling the saints to a spirit of intercession. He's calling you and I to come back to that place of allowing him to wake us up in what we would consider the greatest moment of the church today. In Acts chapter 2, verse 17, the Bible says that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. In other words, we are living in those times. We are living in those days where the greatest moment of the church today is right now in this hour. And the Holy Spirit is telling us to wake up. He's telling us to wake up and be able to embrace him once again. But he's telling us to wake up and be able to fall in love with him again. I, I'm here to speak to us and declare to us that as we mentioned in this great outpour for this greatest revival, that this is the great awakening that is going to surpass the awakenings of the 1700s, the awakenings of the early 1900s on Azusa Street, that we are living now in a time where we are going to see the greatest revival that is going to take place within the kingdom of heaven. 
And I really believe that God is pouring out his spirit on Victory Outreach Church of San Diego. I believe as we unfold history tonight in the book of John chapter 21 verse 25, the Bible says that it's continuing. The miracles and the things that Jesus is doing has continued. In other words, it's still being, being written today as we're serving Jesus today. And I believe that this is the hour to wake up. Jesus in Matthew 26, 40 returned back to his disciples and found them asleep. Come on, somebody, right? He said to Peter, Could, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? And so here, if you remember, this is the same Peter in the book of Matthew chapter 16, 18. And he tells them this, I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. In other words, understand the contrast that the power of the Holy Spirit lies in our prayer life. That the power of God lies in our devotion time with the Holy Spirit. That the power of God to overcome fear, to overcome depression, to overcome anxiety, to overcome the fears of this world is in our prayer life, in our communication with God. And if we're going to triumph as a church, and if we're going to wake up to the alerts that God has given us, come on somebody, then we must recognize that this is the hour for us to stay awake. You know, it's funny because we get alerts on our phones, right? We get text messages and we get alerts on Facebook and we get alerts on Instagram. We get alerts on, uh, on YouTube. And, and right away, what do we do? We go right to the alert, the notification. To see who tagged us, to see who, who contacted us, to see what picture was uploaded or what things was happening. You know, and, and that's, social, that's social media culture, right? But how many of us know that for us as believers, when we yield to the alerts and the promptings and the notifications of the Holy Spirit, we're now beginning to build the power that God has given us that the gates of hell would not prevail against us. You see, it isn't one, it's in this hour that I really believe that we are going to be game changers. That God has called you and I at home to be game changers within the body. In fact, in Matthew 26, 40, it is defined as a moment and a look. He's, he's going to Peter and he says, could not you watch with me for one hour? In this context, Jesus, the night before he was betrayed and about to be crucified, the disciples were asleep and did not wait for the master to return. Understand that there is power that lies in prayer. Power that lies in our devotion time. Power that lies when we allow the Holy Spirit to prompt us and wake us up and come to the feet of Jesus. See, this is setting the stage for us. I really believe what's happening in this world today is setting the stage for the greatest revival in America. We're in a position now where we're shut in, right? We call it a time of separation. We're held back from doing anything that we want to do outside the bare necessities. But how many of us know in this hour, this is exciting. Because there's a shifting and there's a shaking taking place in the body. There's a shifting that's happening in our spirit. And remember, when we shift and we allow God to shift our hearts, transformation begins to happen. Therefore, the Bible says, repent. Therefore, your sins be blotted out that times of refreshing may come. And so I believe tonight that as we receive this power in this shifting that's happening, that God is fully activating you and I. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be witnesses in all J Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. I believe today that even now in this season as you're there, as you're being activated and God is visiting you, that you're going to lead many to salvation. In fact, earlier today, I was in my neighborhood, and we were praying, and we were praying over the, the whole complex, and there was a, a, a gentleman that was outside, and, and he had asked me for a cigarette, and I felt like I was in the book of Acts. I said, you know, okay. I said, well, I don't have silver and gold, have I not? But in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Come on, somebody. I don't, I don't smoke. Come on now. I, I haven't smoked in 20 plus years. But all I had was the faith of Christ. And I feel these are the days and this is the hour in which we must profess and confess Christ our Lord. He says to go into all the world. Preach the gospel to all creation. 
Whoever believes and is baptized, I, I really believe this. You're going to be baptizing some people in your home. Come on, somebody. You're going to have water baptism. You're going to have baptism of the Holy Spirit. Your house is going to be so lit, so on fire that you're preparing right now as this revival is unfolding, that you're going to bring everybody from your neighborhood. You're going to pray for them. You're going to pray for the sick. You're going to see them healed. Why? Because the Bible says that he has given us the power. He's given us the signs that will accompany us, that believe. And in his, in his name, we will drive out demons. We will speak in tongues. And we will be able to see the sick get healed this is the hour this is the finest hour and there's three things i believe tonight before i close as they come and play softly that we must do in this finest hour number one we must watch and we must pray watch and pray there's never a moment in which we can build our relationship more than ever before with our abba father through jesus and the power of the holy spirit in fact, this is an essential for us as Christians, right? This is an essential for you and I as believers. That we are to watch and pray and anticipate what God is going to do each day while we're waiting. You know, the word watch is translated to observe closely. There are nights, there are moments in which the Lord is calling you and I to have a moment of intercession. To have a moment of prayer. In fact, the Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 44, it says, No one can come to him unless the Father who has sent him draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. This is the hour and this is the day in which the Lord is raising up his body for this great end time revival. You know, as I was spending time in prayer the other day, the Lord dropped this in my spirit. And I began to research and I began to look and I began to see that Another religion, or a religion, the Muslim religion, shows you how radical they are. During their time of prayer and separation, they pray about five times a day for about an hour. Imagine that, child of God. Imagine that, you and your home, taking five hours of a day and praying and talking to your Abba Father. Or even, if, even with that, two or three times a day. Come on, somebody. You know, we're working at home now, right? And we, we can schedule our breaks throughout the day. Imagine two or three times. I began to look at a study, and this study revealed that Americans today enjoy five hours and 16 minutes of leisure. And that the average American today spends eight minutes of prayer. What am I saying today? I'm saying that it's our time to wake up. It's our time to wake up and emerge from the state of sleep. Emerge from the sleep that has kept us away from knowing who our Abba Father is. And the beautiful thing about our God is that he's loving, he's graceful, he's merciful. I mentioned this earlier that as I was at this altar, I began to repent and weep because I felt that time was wasted. But never in my life have I felt the sense of urgency to pray for my family, my loved ones, and those that are close to me. And just like tonight, there's people that within your sphere that God wants you to be able to reach out. Maybe those have backslidden. God wants to call back to home. We heard our pastor share this on Sunday. And the spirit of the Lord was so powerful that for those that maybe have fallen away, it's time to come home. Why? Because Jesus loves you. Our Father loves you. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. And for such a time as this, he's calling you back home. That's why it's our hour to pray. Today, it's so important that we, are re we realign ourselves to the Father's heart. That we come back to our Abba Father. We come back to Jesus. You know, as we, as we look and, and we see that the Holy Spirit wants to spend time with you, the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 5, that he yearns for us daily. In other words, he's jealous of the time that we spend without him. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he wants to spend time with you. And as you're there, think about how much time you can spend with him as we're at home during this time of quarantine or separation, what, how we call it. Think about it. The second thing is we must fast and continue to fast. To separate ourselves. Because God counts fasting as an important factor when it comes to a relationship. In fact, he says in the Bible, when you fast, he gives us clear instructions 
on when we fast, not if we fast or shall we fast. But no, fasting is part of our spiritual regimen, our relationship that we have with him. David said it so clearly. He said this in the book of Psalms 35, 13. He said, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer would return to my own ear. In other words, when you fast, how many know you begin to open up the frequencies of heaven? You know, when I was growing up, there was a favorite radio station I used to love to listen to back in Santa Maria. And it was 99KXFM. And I used to love to tune in at a certain time because I knew if I called in, they would shout out my name. They would say my name. And I had to be like the fifth caller. But I had to find it. I had to tune it in. And how many know that when you're fasting and you're separating, you're tuning into the frequency of heaven. That you're opening your ear. Your ear is being opened to an open heaven and God is speaking to you. And, and the word frequency is a sound wave that God wants to use to speak to his children. And I really believe the Bible says this in Revelation chapter 2 verse 29. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In other words, God is always trying to speak to you and I. He's trying to communicate with us. He's trying to share with us the very secrets of his heart to let us know that he's there and he wants to comfort us and encourage us and love us. You know, that's why we can't listen to the lies of the enemy. We can't listen to the fears of the world because the Bible says that we have not been given a spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. And the last thing is this, is that we're called to minister as the saints. You know, it's not a coincidence that we're scattered. I love when Pastor Mark was up here, he had said something in terms of gathering the scattered. And you know, this is not a, this is not a coincidence that we're scattered throughout our homes or scattered throughout our city. But this, I believe, is an ordained setup by our living God who wants to position us for this great time, great end time harvest that is getting ready to pour out his spirit. And he's getting ready to pour out his love through you and I to be demonstrators and practitioners of his word. That as we're called to minister as saints, listen to me, as we're called to minister as the saints of today, the Bible says in Acts chapter 5 verse 42, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. I know we're not gathered together in assembly today. We're not here, but I, I could assure you that the open heaven is still over Victory Outreach Church of San Diego. Come on, somebody. That the open heaven is still over our homes and our family. That the open heaven, the portal that God has opened up for you and I, is still pouring rain. And now, Saint, it's our season. It's our opportunity to be a demonstrator of his love. And my question is, will you wake up in the same manner the Holy Spirit woke me up at 2.45 in the morning? Will you respond and know that he's nudging you? He's calling you. He's waking you up. He's saying, son, daughter, I love you. I miss you. I want to spend time with you. Will you respond and say, Lord, I'm not going to sleep on this hour. But I'm going to stay awake, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to read my word. I'm going to speak words of encouragement. I'm going to speak words of life. In fact, I'm going to start calling my family members, tell them about the love and the power of Jesus Christ. I believe it today that this is our hour, church. This is our season to speak, to speak in a spirit of grace and mercy and bring the hearts back to the Father. Father, we thank you tonight. For your Holy Spirit that is even moving right now. God, for that, that, that family in their living room. Oh, Father, I see Bible studies coming together once again. I see, God, your spirit moving in a tremendous way through, God, marriages and children and young people. Church kids coming home, Father. Lord, your hand is not too short that, Father, it would reach. It would reach to that young person. Tonight, I pray that your word and your presence 
will be so real in their lives today, God, that, Father, even right now, that everything that we would hinge on would be upon your word tonight. And you're right there in your living room. I'm going to do this. I want to pray for you. Maybe tonight you're there and you're, you've got something going on in your body and you need a healing, you need a miracle. Well, we've been hearing more miracles and more testimonies of people getting healed by the power of God right there in their living room. We're seeing migraine headaches move away. We're seeing, we're seeing lungs open up. We're seeing a- a- asthma and, a- and ammonia getting healed and, and getting rebuked in Jesus' name. We're seeing minds being restored. We're seeing hearts being turned back to the Father. And if that's you right there where you're at, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to lay hands. Lay hands on where you feel that disease, that sickness. And we're going to pray right now. Because the same power that's here is the same power that's in your living room. And that power is the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray for healing. We pray for healing in the body tonight. We pray for healing in that neck, on that right side, that, Father, you would begin even now. God, it says in your word that you create miracles. And I ask and I release, God, the healing power of Jesus to flow through this broadcast. That, Father, those that are watching would receive a miracle tonight. Would receive a, would we receive a healing tonight. Oh, Father, we love you this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we worship the Lord, I believe that God's healing power is going to flow all over you. I want to encourage you tonight, Mom, that your son is coming home. I want to encourage you tonight, Dad, that your daughter is coming home. I believe with all my heart that the sons and daughters that are out there that don't know the Lord are making their way back to Jesus tonight. They're making their way back to the cross tonight. And if you believe that, I will agree with you tonight that salvation will be released over your household as we worship the Lord tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I am chosen. I am chosen. Yes. Not forsaken. I am who you say. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out my seat. You are for me. Not against me. I am who you say. comment in that box if you need prayer comment in that box if you need a miracle comment in that box we have a body of believers that will come with you that will agree with you we have a church that loves you and that will believe God for your healing tonight and if that's you I I believe somebody tonight you have something going on in your eye in your left side I believe tonight that the Holy Spirit is now beginning to do something supernatural In the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 11, the Bible says that Paul did unusual miracles through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you look at that that word unusual, that word means creative, a creative miracle. And so if there's something going on in your left eye, I believe that the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. There's, There's a heat that's now beginning to be released over your left eye, and God is doing something supernatural. And God is doing something right now uh, as you're now beginning to feel the healing power of Jesus this evening. Come on, church. I'm going to challenge you. Comment, comment, comment. If you need a healing, if you need a healing in your body, if you need a miracle in your family, if you need a salvation for a loved one, comment, comment, comment. Because we're going to come in agreement today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I am chosen. I am chosen. Not forsaken.
far away from God tonight. Maybe you haven't been to church in a long time. It's okay. You're coming to church now online. You're coming and receiving the word of the Lord online. And maybe you're there and you're distant from God. And, and you, you knew God at one point. In fact, there's some of you that you've done ministry. You've, done, you've been involved. But what happened was a distraction. And you began to stray away. But the Lord is saying, I loved you with an everlasting love. He says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be red as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. That is the beautiful mercy of our Father.